Hey guys, I've got a quick Splarshy Top 5 today, um, because the Scooby-Doo franchise turned 50 last year, and this year there was a new Scooby-Doo movie called Scoob, I am going to share my Top 5 Scooby-Doo series. Let's get started. Number 5 is the new Scooby-Doo movies. The new Scooby-Doo movies is the Scooby-Doo series where the gang would solve mysteries in the company of several guest stars, notable ones being Batman and Robin, the Harlem Globetrotters, the Three Stooges, Sonny and Cher, uh, Davy Jones, and so on and so on. And when I came to doing this top five list, I thought, what are the really good Scooby-Doo shows, and, and only four really came to mind as being really good. So this number five, while it is my fifth favorite Scooby series, it's pretty weak. Like I say, and there's four shows I thought really excelled. And then the other shows besides those four are just not that great or even kind of, or bad or whatever they are. So this is my favorite of the bad show of the of the not as good shows. And um, the reason for that is this show is consistently inconsistent. I mean, the show lacks any sort of true format. You have the idea of a mystery here and a mystery to be solved, but they don't go about it in any way that would suggest anything of any kind. And the guest stars are usually more of a burden to the story than they are of help, and um, the gang's personalities are really off kilter. You don't know how they're going to act. Sometimes Shaggy and Scooby act more serious. Sometimes Fred is a bit of a jokester. Sometimes uh, Daphne uses a lot of puns. The only character that stayed mostly true to their roots was Velma. And so, in that retrospect, this show pretty weak and not to mention there are so many animation mistakes on this show and the show has a very low budget apparently because they could not afford to do the animation as good as Scooby-Doo Where Are You or even as the later Scooby-Doo show that that um, came right after so um, I don't know Some the show is very, very cheap the second season was even animated in Australia, and regardless of the season, it's just a very cheap-looking effort. There's not a whole lot of creativity, but now the um, inconsistency in the storytelling can lead to some interesting character moments for Fred and Daphne. But overall, I'd say skip this, but I would recommend two particular episodes. I would recommend the episode with Davy Jones called Haunted Horseman of Hagglethorn Hall. Not only does it have some very good character moments, but the animation is better than usual for this series, and Davy Jones is a very good guest star. And I'd also recommend um, the Sunny and Share episode, even though it is a very poor mystery and it's very unbalanced in its storytelling. It features great comedy wit from Sunny and Share. The gang's really pointless in that episode, but Sonny and Cher really shine in this episode, making it above average Scooby-Doo, but not because of the gang and Scooby. And two other episodes that are kind of recommendable are the first, three, the pilot episode, the Three Stooges one, um, Ghastly Ghost Town, and the Harlem Glo Globetrotters episode, Mystery of Haunted Island, which it might also be worth a look. But besides that, their show is pretty um, bad. It becomes stale very quick, but it still is my number five spot because there's some really atrocious Scooby series out there. Now to number four. From number four on, you get pretty good shows. I mean, I mean they just get better and better, but number four is decent. Number three is very good. Number two is extremely good, and number one is the best. Okay, so number four is the Scooby-Doo Show. 
It ran from 1976 to 1978. It is a syndicated package, syndication package comprised of three Scooby-Doo um, seasons. One is um, the Scooby-Doo Dynamite Hour. The second is the Laugh Olympics Leftovers, eight episodes to fill in the Laugh Olympics that are in the traditional Scooby-Doo mystery format. And third is a faux season of Scooby-Doo, where are you, Scooby-Doo, where are you, season three. And these three seasons together create the package that is the Scooby-Doo show. The Scooby-Doo show has its ups and downs, but one thing about it is that it definitely returns Scooby-Doo to its mystery format roots. But that is also to its own detriment in the fact that um, it leads to a lot of repetitiveness. Whereas the original show, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You?, would just um, go, okay, there's the monster at the beginning, we investigate, we unmask them at the end. Scooby-Doo show, the Scooby-Doo show, it goes more for a by-the-numbers approach, where this happens, this happens, this happens, in a particular order, over and over again, to where it becomes monotonous at times. And when they do break it up a little bit, it's a nice diversion. But usually they follow a, a certain standard, a certain formula. Similar to how Putnam and Scooby-Doo would use the same formula over and over again, barely varying it at all. And it's funny to me, people call Scooby-Doo, where are you, repetitive. But it's one of the least repetitive Scooby series. It's only repetitive in the fact that it follows a simple, basic structure. But what Scooby-Doo, where are you, does with the structure is completely up to itself within that episode. The only things that are required is that there's a mystery to be solved, there's a monster, and there's an unmasking. But Scooby-Doo Show just goes straight out into, this is the rules, follow them, one, two, three, the end of the episode. But in spite of that, this movie does have, it. this uh, show, the Scooby-Doo Show does have an animation bump way above the new Scooby-Doo movies, and a little bit above Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? It's better animated. It's better drawn than new Scooby-Doo movies for sure. Um, so yeah, it's a very nice entry in the series with a variety of monsters and characters. And um, I would definitely recommend watching it. Uh, you can get the Scooby-Doo Dynamite Hour on DVD. You can get the Sc Scooby-Doo Where Are You Season 3 on DVD. And you can get five of the eight 1977 Laugh Olympics leftover episodes on DVD. And so that, that would give you most of the Scooby-Doo show. But, um, yeah, that definitely deserves my number four spot. Number three would be Shaggy and Scooby-Doo Get a Clue. And I know a lot of people don't like Shaggy and Scooby-Doo Get a Clue. But to me, it was a nice change of pace for Scooby-Doo. I watched this some as a child and thought it wasn't too bad. And I really liked certain moments of it as a kid. But overall, it was just a good show, you know. But now I like it even better. You know, I watched it. And um, there's things about it that are really interesting. Little details. And I like the voice of um, Shaggy in this done by Scott Menville. Because even though he does not sound like Shaggy, he is the only one that's not, you know, he's the only one, you know, because Casey Kasem set the standard, and he's the only one that follows Casey Kasem's um, delivery style. I mean, he doesn't sound like Casey Kasem, but he uses the same inflection and um, the way he says his words. To and it matches the Casey Kasem's, so I was I really like that, and I like the idea that even though this isn't the mystery solving format, that it again uses a basic concept to take its story along, and um, this basic story is just Doctor Fives wants to uh, rule the world, and Shaggy and Scooby have to stop him, and they just use it over and over again in various entertaining ways, and it's a basic thing. That's the important thing about Scooby-Doo. You must use a basic concept 
That way the audience knows what to expect. And some people would compare it to what they call cinema, like animated comfort food. But really what it is, it's one of those dependable things like Friday the 13th or Godzilla or James Bond where you know what to expect. And that's what allows for its lasting durability. And another thing I liked, when I was a kid, I watched this show. And, I'm, and I told my mom, I'm like, these char- Scooby Shaggy looks like Shaggy used to, kind of. I really thought that the design was good. Now when I watch it, I can tell it doesn't really look that much the same. But I know what I was going for. Because in this uh, incarnation, they have the line and dot eyes, which was something I always thought was very important to in drawing the characters. So in this, when I saw they brought it back, it allowed for a whole new level of expressiveness, which had been missing from a lot of the previous entries. And so for these reasons, and the fact that it's just so entertaining and comedic to watch, it gets the number three spot on my list. Number two, the Laugh Olympics. Okay, the Laugh Olympics, 1977, it was Scooby-Doo. Um, it was a crossover thing, it was like the Olympics where you have three teams, the Really Rottens, the Yogi Yahoois, and the Scooby Doobies, and they would all compete in events for to get the gold, silver, and bronze medals, and the Really Rottens would always try to cheat, and they would usually lose, and uh, they would all compete in all these events, and it's a very funny show, very comedic, good scenes with uh, Grape Ape and Quacker, and uh, Daisy May and her pig Suey, and... Um, uh, the dog Muttley, you know, always laughing off to the side, and there was this rabbit that always like bluck noise, bluck, you know, and it's just a really funny show to watch. So that's why it gets the number two spot. Number one, Scooby Doo, where are you? There is no better Scooby Doo show than the original, the 1969 to 1970 Scooby series, Scooby Doo, where are you? It, this show just just does a, such a good job. With the characters, with the writing, with the atmosphere, with the music, all these things. And even though the animation's not the best, the drawings are great, the villains are captivating. And in the first season, one of my favorite singers sings the theme song, Larry Marks. And then another singer I like, Austin Roberts, sings the theme for the second season. And he also sings the songs. They actually added songs to Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? for the chase scenes in Season 2. And uh, I just thought it was great because these songs are not on the nose in the fact that the song is about the villain. The song isn't about the villain. It's just a song that they're playing. And I thought that was a very nice thing to do, just to make these nice little rock, pop rock tunes for you to enjoy and listen to. And it's not like Pup where they stupidly make the song about the monster. How cheesy is that, you know? So, Scooby-Doo, where are you? For all kinds of reasons, for all the atmosphere, and for having some of my absolute favorite episodes. Like, if you used to look at my top 20 Scooby-Doo list, Scooby-Doo, where are you? would take up, those episodes would take up 14 of spots in my top 20 list. Scooby-Doo, where are you? is a legendary cartoon, and it's why it deserves the number one spot on my list. Because there's just no comparison. You have that original boys cast, Casey Kasem, Frank Welker, uh, Early on, Stefania Christopherson, later Heather North, um, Nicole Jaffe, and uh, Don Messick. And um, you can't beat the original five. You know, Casey Kasem with the energy he brings to it. And um, Nicole Jaffe with her voice of sarcasm, grumpiness, and intellect. Frank Walker with his uh, deadpan, like emotionless kind of performance which I really thought was interesting. Don Messick with his endearing sound. Stefaniana Christofferson bringing a very nice, um, a detailed kind of interesting uh, voice, vocal delivery. No surprise considering she was also a short a singer for a short time. And um, you bring them all together. The only real letdown was Heather North voicing Daphne after Stefaniana Christofferson's departure. I never really understood why people liked Heather North's portrayal so much, but she did it for years and years and years. But still, I really like that Scooby-Doo Are You is absolute best. And until next time, this has been a quick, splurshy review.